Well, hello there. My name is Christopher. Thanks for joining me in this video. And in this video, I am going to share with you who Paul was writing to in his letter to the Galatians. The title I've made for this video that you might have clicked on is, Was Galatians Written to North Galatia or to South Galatia? The book of Galatians is a fantastic book of the Bible that I recommend for people that are going to lead a Bible study. If it's a brand new Bible study, if a pastor is going to a church for the first time, I think Galatians is a great book to, to preach for the first time at a church. And Galatians is a book where we know with absolute certainty who the author was, Paul. Throughout church history, we've always known who the author was with certainty and even some of the most liberal uh, critical scholars say that Paul wrote the letter to the Galatians. So we're cer certain of the authorship and, and the content of the letter, but we are very uncertain as to whom he was writing the letter to. So in this video, I want to share with you the two views that exist about who Paul was writing his letter to the Galatians to that we have in our scripture. So let me say a few things, and then I'll kind of lay out support for both views that you might find in your study Bible or in your notes. And I'm adapting some of this material from uh, an, uh, an article from Dan Wallace on Bible.org, as well as some material from Doug Moo and D.A. Carson in their book, Introduction to the New Testament, as well as Donald Guthrie's book, uh, New Testament Introduction. So I'll put some information on those resources down below so you know where I'm kind of piecing all of this material from for this video. So Paul writes the book of Galatians to believers in Galatia. We know from chapter 1, verse 2, he references that. To the churches of Galatia, is how it reads in the NASB Bible. The problem with Galatia is that it had two distinct meanings in the New Testament era, in the first century. There was North Galatia, that was the geographical or ethnic region. Or it was South Galatia, that was the Roman province political region. So let me give you some background on both areas, and then I'm going to give you support for each view that people have about who Paul wrote this to. Now, North Galatia would be the ethnic geographic region. If you have uh, maps in your Bible, usually they'll label Galatia as being in the north where Paul traveled on his uh, second missionary journey. Now, North Galatia, the ethnic geographical region, is an area where the Celtic people lived. These Celtic tribes moved there from ancient Gaul. They attacked and nearly destroyed Rome in 390 BC, and they called this region Galatia from the people that were there, Gauls, G-A-U-L, Gauls, Galatia, Galatians. The location was in the mountains in the northern area there. It had no major cities and very little Jews that lived there as well. It had a very small Jewish population, if any. Now, according to the book of Acts, Paul did not visit this region until his second missionary journey in Acts 16. On this visit, they only traveled through what... Luke says is Phrygia and Galatia in Acts 16.5. They kind of travel through there on their way to Macedonia and Achaia, it seems to, to feel that way on their second missionary journey. They go through North Galatia. Okay. Now, if this view is correct, then Paul would have written the letter from Corinth during his third missionary journey in about 55 to 56. AD, right? If the North Galatian theory is correct, if Paul first traveled through North Galatia on his second missionary journey, it's likely that he wrote the letter that we have, Galatians, during his third missionary journey about 55 or 56 AD. Now let's talk about the South Galatian region. That was the political name, Galatia, for the Roman province. In 130, 189 BC, 
The Gauls were conquered, and the area became a province of Rome. The process of conquest and assimilation was completed in 25 BC by Augustus and declared the region an official Roman province and called it Galatia. This is the southern area of that region, not the north, not the ethnic geographical, but now we're talking about a political province that was also called Galatia. Thus, it was a province of Galatia, not just a people. The province extended to the south and incorporated parts of Lyconia, Phrygia, and Pisidia. And this was the location of Paul's first missionary journey. He goes through South Galatia on his first missionary journey. Well, you can read about that in Acts 13 and 14 that occurred in 47 to 49 AD. Okay? Now, this view became popular when a guy named Sir William Ramsey did extensive archaeological work that led to this new view. Okay? So that political meaning for South Galatia included the cities of Lystria, Derb, Iconium that Paul visited and we read about on his first missionary journey, like I said, in Acts 13-14. So if this view is correct, then the Jerusalem visit recorded in Galatians 2 is not the same as the Jerusalem visit recorded in Acts 15, but instead is an earlier visit. I'll come back to that a little later. So those are the two views. Some people believe that Paul was writing to North Galatia, the region that he visited on his second missionary journey, or some people believe Paul was reading, writing to the South Galatian area, which he visited on his first missionary journey. Okay? So let's talk about support for that North Galatian theory that Paul was writing to the believers in North Galatia that he met on his second missionary journey. We call this the ethnic region view or the geographical region view. Now, it has some strong support. The strongest basis of support that Paul was writing to the Galatians living in the north was that that was the historical position of the church, really until the 19th century when Sir William Ramsay did some archaeological work and proposed something different. So for 1,800 years, the church really believed that Paul was writing to the Galatians in North Galatia. A second piece of support is that the natural meaning of Galatia or Galatians, as referenced in Galatians 1, 2, and 3, 1, is the geographical region in the north, North Asia Minor. The, the people that, that live there use those terms. That was the, the most popular understanding of that word, Galatia referring to the Gauls in the north. And Luke tends to describe places according to geographical regions instead of according to political provinces. For example, Luke describes Pamphylia in Acts 13.13, Pisidia, Acts 13.14, and Laconia, Acts 14.6, which are geographical terms. Those are not specific Roman provinces, as like Macedonia or Achaia. Those are Roman provinces. So if Luke usually describes geographical terms when he describes Phrygian and Galatian region in Acts 16.16, 16, if we follow his consistent use of terms, then Luke is probably writing about Paul's visit to the north. If Paul visited the geographical districts of North Galatia in Acts 16.16 16, and 18.23, then he went there twice and published, probably established churches there, of which he could write letters to. Acts 16.6 6 is Paul's journey out on his second missionary journey. Acts 18.23 is Paul's missionary journey back. A fourth piece of support is that the natural reading of Galatians 2, 1 through 10 is to refer to Acts 15, right? Galatians chapter 2, verses 1 through 10 
Paul talks about this discussion that he had with leaders in Jerusalem. And if you read the book of Acts, there's this long debate that occurs in Acts 15 by Paul in Jerusalem with the leaders. So it naturally connects. Now, one piece of one weakness to this support that Paul was writing to the believers in North Galatia is that patristic, medieval, and reformer, Reformation commentators, they all assume that Paul wrote this letter to the northern region of Galatia because the southern region, that province, that Roman province of South Galatia was reduced in size and significance. It was not as well known, and it was reduced in size and significance by the Roman government in AD 74, 137, and 197. So it's not surprising that all people throughout the history of the church believe Paul was writing to North Galatia because South Galatia was very minor, not well known in size and significance. Now, I believe that Paul did not write this letter back to the Galatians in the north that he visited on his second missionary journey. I believe that Paul wrote the letter to the Galatians to people in South Galatia that he visited on his first missionary journey, the political province view. Now, let me give you some support for this, and it's quite a bit of little words, but I've got it all written out here, and I want to walk through it. Some support that Paul was writing to the believers in South Galatia, the Roman province of Galatia, not the geographical region of people. Now, it is possible that Paul never went to the North Galatian region. If Acts 16.6 and 18.23 are referring to a political region instead of a geographical region, then Paul, according to Acts, maybe never even went to North Galatia. That's a, a possibility. It is possible that Paul traveled to North Galatia. Luke does not mention that Paul established churches there. Right? So in that second missionary journey, when Paul goes, Luke does not say that Paul established churches there. A third piece of support was Paul was suffering from illness. Right In Galatians 4.13, he references this illness that he has. And if he was going to go somewhere to recover, then Galatia... The geographical region is a very unlikely place you would go to recover. It was off the well-beaten path. It was not well-traveled. There were not a lot of big cities. It was hard to get to. It was mountainous and had difficult terrain. So if you're sick, you're not going to go somewhere that's hard to get to to rest and recover. You're going to try to find a big, comfortable city that's easily easy to get to. North Galatia was kind of off the beaten path. A fourth piece of support that Paul wrote to the believers in the south, the political province, Roman province of Galatia, is that while Luke often used geographical and ethnic names, Paul does not follow that same practice. If you read 1 Corinthians 16, 19, 2 Corinthians 8, 1, 2 Corinthians 1, 1, and even if you read... 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, Paul references places according to their Roman province name, not the geographical ethnic people name. So he talks about in 2 Corinthians 8.1, the believers in Macedonia. That's the Roman province. And in that Roman province, half of that Roman province was what used to be the, the Greeks, the, the country of Greece. And then there are cities. See how Paul seems to use Roman province names, not older people names or geographical names. Okay. Another piece of support that Paul was writing to the believers in South Galatia that he visited on his first missionary journey. I think this is the strongest one. In Paul's letter to the Galatians, he references Barnabas three times. 
And he references Barnabas in a way that seems like they know Barnabas, that they met Barnabas, that they met Barnabas when Paul was traveling with Barnabas through their city. Now that's important because Barnabas did not travel with Paul on Paul's second missionary journey. You remember what happened before that second missionary journey? Paul was about ready to get, to leave, but Paul and Barnabas have a a discussion and an argument, and Paul goes one way, and Barnabas takes someone else and goes a different way. So if Paul went to North Galatia and then writes this letter back to them, why would he mention a man named Barnabas that they never met because that man was not with Paul? Does that make sense? So it seems like first, Paul's first missionary journey would be the journey in which these people met Barnabas as Paul traveled through the Roman province of Galatia. Another strong piece of support is when you read Galatians chapter 2 verses 1 through 10. Galatians chapter 2, 1 through 10 addresses an issue that Paul has which the Council of Jerusalem in Acts 15 would have solved, right? So he brings up this issue about the gospel and his authority of the gospel. But that issue would not have been an issue if Acts 15 had already occurred, okay? And Paul's mis first missionary journey occurs in Acts 13 and 14. Then there's a three-year gap, and then it resumes in Acts 16, 17, and 18. Acts 15 is the Jerusalem council that Paul appears before. So it seems weird that if Paul was on his second missionary journey after the Jerusalem council, it seems weird that Paul would have had this issue visiting Galatia in the north after the Jerusalem council would have already solved that issue. So the timing makes better sense that Paul travels through South Galatia on his first missionary journey. He encounters this difficulty, these troubles, and then later he goes to Jerusalem in Acts 15 and gets an answer and help for that trouble that the Galatians have experienced with Paul. Another piece of support that that shows us Paul was writing to South Galatia that he visited on his first missionary journey is that in Galatians 2.1, Paul says, it says that Paul went again to Jerusalem with it feeling like it was Paul's second visit. So that could have been Paul's second visit that he had in Acts 11.30 because Paul had already been to Jerusalem in Acts 9.26, okay? Some other pieces of support. The book of Galatians contains descriptive details that match details of Paul's first missionary journey in Acts 13 and 14 in Galatia. First, the reception of Paul as an angel of God. He references that in Galatians, that you receive me as an angel of God. That might match the attempted worship of Paul and Barnabas at Lyconian, the cities of Lystria and Derb in Acts 14, 6 through 18. Right? That happened to Paul and Barnabas on their first missionary journey. A second reference in Galatians to Paul's physical marks of suffering that he talks about in Galatians 6, 17, that might refer to the scars Paul received from being stoned in Acts 14, 19 to 20. Okay? So that's the... That's some more support. Another piece of support is that word Galatians. It was the only word available that would describe the people living in Antioch, Lystra, Iconium, and Derb, the four places Paul went on his first missionary journey. If he's going to use a, 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 a name that covers those areas, that's the only term he could have used. It was the Roman province of Galatia. So that also gives us good support. A travel to an establishment of churches in South Galatia matches Paul's practices of strategically traveling to influential and populated cities that had significant Jewish populations. If you read all three of Paul's missionary journeys, it seems Paul is very strategic. 
He wants to go to populated cities that have a Roman, uh, that have a Jewish synagogue and a, a presence of Jews. And he wants to preach the gospel first to the Jews in the synagogue. And then he wants to take the gospel to all the Gentiles. This is a problem because North Galatia was much smaller. And there were not as many people there. The cities were not as well known. We don't have a, records of a lot of Jews there. And even when Luke, as I described earlier, I'm not sure if I, I did that, in Paul's second missionary journey, Luke doesn't say that Paul established any churches in Galatia. Paul just makes, uh, Luke makes a really quick reference to the fact that they traveled through those regions. He doesn't talk about Paul's interactions in the city or the synagogue or going to jail or anything like that. But Paul traveling through South Galatia on his first missionary journey does match the habit that we see Paul of taking well-traveled roads to go to big cities to preach to Jews and to Gentiles together. So thanks for watching this video. I'm not sure if I've ever done as technical of a video like this, but I know there's some debate out there and maybe you're writing a paper for college about the, the destination of Paul's letter and I hope this has been some good ideas for you, some good helps for you. Again, I'll reference the, the, the books and the website where I kind of adapted all of this together onto my own handwritten scratch pieces of paper to help you. Thanks for watching. I pray this video helps you and encourages you to study God's word, to dig in, to have a little deeper appreciation sometimes for alternate views that maybe we're always taught. But most of all, we want to think through and study in depth the best we can and be humble about our interpretations of these passages. I hope I've been a good example of that to you. So thanks for watching. If you have anything to share, is there anything you wish I would have said that I didn't? Anything you wish I would have addressed that I didn't address? Leave it down there as a question in the comments. Or do you have some things to add to these arguments? The support or weaknesses for each view? I encourage you to add your own thoughts in a comment down there below. Thanks for watching. My name is Christopher Scott. I hope to, to see you and connect with you in another video in the future. Thanks for watching. God bless.